it's just basically a, a room of getting all the artists together uh, and their portraits, so you get a sort of sense of the self. And actually, what's quite nice is you've got some self-portraits here. And usually, we've got a goth self-portrait, which I think is quite rare, <laughs> other than the uh, very early work. Um, a very beautiful young portrait of Fred in his studio there. And then we've got one that echoes it in later life, which is just to the side there. So you, get, you can get a real sense of how his his technique changed. We've obviously got the portrait of Jackie, which I absolutely love, and I think needs to come into the collection, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, because it really, really does give you that essence of, I've really got a fight for my place <laughs> as an artist and as a woman. I, I, I just think it's wonderful, really yeah, confident, which is excellent. What we should note, we should note, is we've got the two um, drawings by John, John Bellamy. Bellamy yeah. So, do you want to yeah. give an introduction to um, John? John Bellamy, um, another RA, uh, Scottish, um, who basically moved down to Hastings um, um, ostensibly to try and um, uh, keep keep alive, I think. Um, and uh, you know, liver transplant, and he became very close friends with Mick Rooney and Gus um, during the 80s. Um, and these are Bellamy, Bellamy's uh, portraits of, um, he calls Gus Lord Byron <laughs> Cummins. <laughs> and um, Mick Rooney um, is over here. Um, and um, I think they had a kind of interesting time together in Hastings. Um, you can see it in the photographs. Yeah, so the this, is, this is Gus and Mick. Um, it looks like they've got their drink from the pub still. Coming back up the West Hill anyway, uh, to that, that part of the West Hill. Um, I, I didn't, we didn't talk about the portrait downstairs actually, um, alongside Space Boot, which is by Mick Rooney, and it's a picture of uh, John Bellamy as an artist sort of working on the beach um, and he's been sort of depicted as uh, a sort of a Greek philosopher you know playing with the nets and drawing and, and, and making these sort of uh, illustrations amongst the fishing boats in Hastings um, and I think he he uh, he, li he lived here uh, until he lived down in Hastings until he died so um, um, but an, in, an interesting interloper in their sort of network uh, of Gus and, and Mick um, during that period. I think the portraits by Fred are so lovely because yeah. they're very personal. They're this lovely. is fa so their you, family. You've got portraits. Audrey, Danny, Rachel, of course. Um, and uh, they're beautifully executed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think we you always forget because obviously everyone knows Fred as the landscape painter. So it's so lovely to have those portraits in this exhibition because they're just so different to the sort of Fred we know. And then obviously it's one in the studio. He's pitched himself very small, which is quite yeah. usual for a landscape painter because <laughs> you want to depict the most of the landscape. And his landscape is his studio. But what I, I think is sublime about this is the window oh, yeah. in the studio, I just think it's incredible. Yeah. And again, a yeah. really good use of colour. Yeah, um, just and, and, and you've got the light as well, it? <laughs> the opposite side. Mm. It's incredible, incredible depiction. And then you, of you speaking to that, you've got the etching of, yeah, of, of him in his studio too. Mm. So you get the, the technique there really with his etching. So again, you know, how, how you can incorporate all those different details. Um, these uh, Mick Rooney paintings, we, we um, got these on loan actually from a lady who lives in Northian um, and uh, called Geraldine Andrews and her husband was the chair of the trust here at the gallery. Um, and uh, basically, um, um, this was done in the um, late 80s, and I think various crises 
in, in mixed life. And um, I think Geraldine explained this. She's a lady of about 80 something now. And she said, oh yeah, Mick, Mick came um, to a party at the house with um, Fred, uh, Fred and Audrey and um, uh, a guy called Louis Turpin, who, who used to sort of, was, is obviously a painter, but used to provide music as well, and very um, um, well known in, in terms of doing live music. And um, uh, she said, oh yeah, Mick really turned up one night and then he, 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 he I'd only just met him and he stayed for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he basically um, sort of moved in there um, during, I think, that was a little bit of a crisis in, in his life. And um, the way that Mick sort of got gets through his crisis, if you like, um, he creates these um, uh, dreamlike um, narratives. And uh, this one, I think, is particularly quite a tender piece that relates to his children and um, this time when he felt that they were kind of growing up and leaving him and moving on and um, I think that's why you get this sort of sense of childlike things um, birds flying um, it's quite sad it's quite sad actually um, and um, I think with mixed work as well, you you definitely get the allegorical, so you get the sort of asses and the you know you get all the sort of references to the animals, you know, particularly Renaissance paintings. And then he adds those sort of beautiful sort of you know magical elements of landscape at the top, where you're sort of wandering off into the sort of dream world. He yeah he definitely has that power of or command within his paintings of taking you off into that otherworldly place. Mm. The other thing he likes to do is he, he likes to reunite people in paint, or so he sort of <laughs> describes it as like, you know, I lost them, but I got them back when I did the painting. Mm. I just think also mentioning Jackie's landscape here, because we haven't really seen some of Jackie's landscapes, how similar they are to Fred's, with that, you know, the sculptural trees. Um, so this is a very early one uh, piece, it was, it was painted oh, so in Edgerton, so in the 60s. Um, and they used to paint outdoors, so they were plein air painters, you know. And this is, the, this is quite a dark picture yeah. and it involves this green, it was basically a fox that was nailed, uh, um, hunted and nailed to a tree. Yeah. And um, uh, the other story that, when, uh, when Fred was in here, he told us this story of being at Edgerton and saying how wonderful it was and everything, and, and they had this sort of great time painting. Um, but one day the hunt came through, and um, Fred didn't particularly support fox hunting, <coughs> and basically told them to uh, to, to get <laughs> and actually it led it led to them having to leave. He had to leave Edgerton as a result because he told apparently you know you couldn't talk to the estate owners like that. Um, so, and it's funny that Jackie's chosen the same sort of image, you know, in Edgerton to create uh, uh, the, a scene that's very dark actually. Um, Colour palette because it's, it's the London they were living in, you know, it was very sort of yeah, 1940s after the war. Yeah. You'll see Peter Gus in between because Gus is playing with um, his existentialism. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you might see at the top there. It's still in 2011, but it's talking about Zyklon being 1945. Yeah, so. Uh, most people know what the cyclone B is, don't they? It's the, the gas that they gave to um, the, obviously the Jewish people when they put them in the gas chambers. So he's, you know, typically gas, you know, he's working, you know, with that sort of dark side of humanity, which I have to say is the opposite of Mick, really. <laughs> Considering they're such close friends, yeah. you really get that essence of how different they are as artists mm -hmm. and people. Um, on show. Um, from Mick's point of view, uh, the connections as you came up the stairs with the coast, he was always looking for, um, you know, inspiration when he moved down here. It was like, what shall I paint? 
And I think the first thing that hit him was actually how close we are to France. And I remember actually when we first moved here, you know, you, go, you drive to Canberra and you only get French radio stations. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's really weird. And of course, you, we are very close. And that proximity um, of France is depicted in some of these paintings, um, uh, The Road to Boulogne and the kind of cross-channel painting of the collection house. Um, this big portrait, um, Unquiet Lunch, um, by me, um, is about, uh, it's got the West Hill, uh, again, in Hastings, depicted in there. Um, he was very unhappy with it and rolled it up and stuffed it in a dustbin. Um, but um, uh, Geraldine Andrews decided it had some merit, <laughs> um, pulled it out of the bin, and um, as her train was as a conservator, she was a conservator by, by profession, um, she conserved it, re-stretched it over a frame, and has had it in her house for um, certainly the last, I think about the last 30 odd years on the wall, until we came along and said, could we borrow it for the, the exhibition? And Mick, very kindly, he, he looked at it, and he, I said, you know, did you, do you like it now? And he's like, well, I think it's okay. <laughs> and I should, probably shouldn't have put it in the bin, but I was having a difficult time. And, you know, and um, it was, I think he, he, it was soon after he did actually leave um, Hastings uh, for quite a long while. Um, um, but um, it, again, conjures up all of those sort of dark aspects of what is going on in this picture? You know, who are these people? Um, and it, they're not really relating uh, very well to each other, it seems. And nobody's, it's called Unquiet Lunch, but it doesn't look like anybody's got any lunch at all. That's um, its interpretations of um, disquiet. Um, these, these are, um, these are actually the
you'll see that exploding shed. It's it's all the objects hanging, and you see it from optical illusions, and that's exactly what Gus is doing in his painting. He's he's playing with you, he's working with your perspective. He's, your spectatorship is probably the most important thing about the painting, which is so unusual. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's a series, so uh, the the um, Mick Rooney's um, kind of uh, journey into the Book of Dreams and uh, very complicated um, scenes of theatricals in in, in China. Um, and it, it sort of, in a way, it reminds me of uh, 18th century strolling players, you know, moving from one town to the next. They've got all their theatrical properties in their little cart. And off they go to the next village, you know, before they get um, imprisoned for putting on a play or whatever. Uh, um, and then um, the last one here, transporting the Buddha. Um, and these are the most recent works of Mix, actually. They're, they're only, I think, um, 2012, this year, I think, they are. So um, they were part, they're part of a series that he's been working on. Um, and there were two others that were actually at the summer show, um, the RA summer show, um, um, uh, um, this year.